Hello there. Today I thought I would share with you my technique for adding texture to textiles. I like to use art mediums to add texture on fabric. And here is how I do it. What do I mean by textile mediums? Well this is just a sample of some of the ones I have. You can get texture gels, um, sand, you can get plain matte gels, fibre paste, a few different brands of fibre paste. Some gels and pastes have things added like coarse pumice gel, um, coarse texture gel which is very similar to fibre paste. You can add your own things to all the gels. Um, you can add any colours if you want to colour it beforehand or you can put them on and then colour them later. Um, you can even use gesso as well. In general, um, if it says paste, that means it will probably dry with a white or slightly grey background. The, certainly for golden that's the case. And the gels in the golden brand all tend to dry clear. Um, some have some are matte finish, some are glossy. It really doesn't matter what you use, they're all the same. Um, things that have additives like the pumice gel, although that's a gel, it does dry clear. The pumice itself is grey. So you get this grey texture and when it dries you get little grey dots, you can actually see the grey dots and some of the sand texture gels, there's a few different varieties um, some of them the sand is white so when it's, when it's on and dry you see white dots in it others have a slightly yellowish or brown um, sand in them so you really need to test your products first to see if they will do what you want um, and I'll just show you some examples of things I've done in the past with the texture gels. This is an example of the coarse pumice gel when it's dry. This was golden coarse pumice gel. And I've used the stencil to do the hearts onto interfacing or stiffening material. And then I've stitched in the gaps afterwards. Coarse pumice gel, gel, although I have stitched through it here, it was very difficult and I actually used an awl to make the holes. Um, I wouldn't recommend stitching through the pumice gel, but you can certainly stitch around it. And another one that I did using a stencil was this one. And again, it's the coarse pumice gel and it's done on a luchador background. Some of my more recent work I've done with the texture gels is this one where I've used a variety of different gels because this was a demo for a workshop that I was doing. And I'll explain some of these techniques but I will also put a photo on my blog which tells you what each of these squares is. You can see some are slightly more shiny than others. And to get this technique, I put tape down to make a grid pattern. Just any tape. I used washi tape because I have a lot of it that I'm never going to use. And then I just, for contrast, added two extra strips of tape. If you're going to do that, as soon as you finish doing all of the gels or paste in all the texture in your squares, remove the tape before it dries. Otherwise your tape will probably be stuck there permanently. And I also did this one the same. This one has been painted with fabric paint. And the first one was coloured with sprays. So dye sprays or mica sprays. I tend to use whatever I have. Um, I did this one to experiment with the metallic Lumiere paints. But how you finish it is up to you. When I started with the texture gels, I didn't really know what they were going to do, so I did these samples. And I would suggest that whatever mediums you've got, test them out on fabric first to see how they stick. 
I've written here, if I could remember the brand, I've written the brand, but I've certainly written the type of um, paste or gel that I've used. You can see here, this is the pumice gel, and it's a slightly different colour to the others. And for my samples, I've also done one strip of fabric paint down there and one strip of acrylic paint, a matte acrylic paint. Just to see what the difference was, you can see how differently um, the gels take the colour. Some take the fabric paint quite well, others don't. Um, this one's a bit patchy, but with the acrylic paint it's quite solid colour. And I also stitched through it, don't know if you can see, I've done a line of metallic stitching, which is the top stitching, metallic thread, a line of hand stitching, and a line of regular um, poly cotton or cotton sewing machine thread, so that I could see how they all stitched. The only one I broke my needle on for the gels was... I think I think it was that one because I've added micro beads to the gel and I think I hit one of the beads. But the rest of them I actually could stitch through but I wouldn't recommend stitching through the coarse pumice gel because that's got quite big particles in it. So you can see I've used um, fibre paste, pumice gel, modelling paste. Modelling paste and texture paste um, tend to be the same thing, just different manufacturers give them different names. You can do a lot with it. Um, here, I, when you use the matte gels, you can use them to stick things to your, pay, to your fabric. So here I've used matte gel with wax paper and I've stuck, put a layer of matte gel and then scrunched up the wax paper and stuck that to the top of it. Um, so you can see it's firmly fastened on there, it's not coming off. Easy to stitch through. The fabric paint didn't like the wax, but the acrylic paint didn't mind it. This one I've used matte gel to stick quilt batting down. Again, um, these ones it's just got the matte gel on the back. But I also put matte gel on the front and it's quite firm but still stitchable. So um, just write down what you're doing the whole time. This one's got metal leaf. Um, I did two samples of metal leaf. I didn't keep the other one. The first time I did the metal leaf I mixed it in with the gel and then put it on but it tarnished. Um, so this time I put the matte gel down and then press the metal leaf on top and that's kept the colour and also was able to be um, painted over so that's an interesting one to add metal leaf to your work. This one has little bits of mica pressed into the gel and here I, make, I mix the mica into the gel. So you get, again, a different look. Um, here you can see more of the texture from the, gel, from the mica because it was just pressed on top. Um, this is the mica that I used. You can see it's very fine and it stays shiny. Oops, getting it everywhere now. But it stays shiny even when you've mixed it into your matte medium. So um, it's an interesting addition to your work. Here I've used a flexible moulding paste, and you can see how flexible it is, it's very soft, um, to stick cheesecloth, what I call cheesecloth, to material. Um, you might call it muslin, some places it's muslin, sometimes it's cheesecloth. And here the same thing but with matte gel to glue it on. So you can add, certainly add things. Um, you can put the paste on top and you get an interesting texture. Um, this has got micro beads mixed into the gel and applied. This one has iridescent flakes. 
I've had these iridescent flakes in my stash for quite some time. They are actually meant to be used in paper making. Um, I don't know if you can still get them, but there are certainly other sorts of things that are similar that you can add to your work if that's the desired effect you want. Um, I actually mixed it into the gel because it didn't really work when I pressed it on. Um, and when it painted, some of it still visible. You can use the gel to glue things onto your work, like string. Um, this one has those same flakes, but into moulding paste. So you don't get the shiny effect, but it makes a really interesting looking texture. This one has glitter mixed into the um, matte gel. Um, glitter, if you use coloured glitter, sometimes the colour comes off. Test what you have and see. This one I've just sprinkled the glitter on to top, so not a, as much stuck, which could be the look that you're going for. And this one... I've just done a layer of coarse moulding paste and then I've sprayed it with a spray dye and I wanted to see also whether the colour came through very much but that was another experiment. As I said, do little experiments with all your stuff and then keep them so that you know, um, especially if you get different brands of things. Here I've got a few new brands of, of items so I t again tested things out. This is the Mica Flakes again. This is a new, a different brand of texture gel, and that's quite coarse compared to some of the others. And this is the Winsor and Newton Sand Texture Gel. As you can see, it's sort of a yellowy colour, and that's a double layer of that same texture gel. So it's very, that one is very textured. And that's putting the cheesecloth onto the sand gels. All of these techniques could be used for landscapes, adding texture to wearable art. I wouldn't do it on anything that you're going to wash because they're water-based. So when you wet them, they'll go all soft, like when you wet glue that's water-based. It goes all soft and will probably wash off. Something that I really like to do is to spray it with these Lindy Stamp Gang sprays. Um, the Glimmer Mists also work. Because it's, you're not washing it, you can spray them afterwards. This one here was sprayed with a red and a green one of the Lindy Stamp Gangs. So... Um, it's interesting in that the texture, the, the sprays travel along the fabric and under the edges of the gel. So you actually get, I don't know if you can see around these circles, there's a little bit of a border there where the, because they're so wet, they've sort of gone under, just under the edge. Um, and you can see it here where the green has gone under the edge of the gel. It looks darker because it's under the gel. Um, it's an interesting effect and I really like that. I actually prefer the sprays to the fabric paints. But, you know, test out what you want for your project. For this one, I've actually mixed the colour into the gel before I applied it. So I've used Dilutions sprays for the colour because I can just mix up a little bit of gel so I'll just get a bit of gel generally use whatever you think you're going to need in your little project you don't actually need much. Um, if you mix up too much, 
make sure you put the lids on straight away because if, if it dries around the lid, lid area or half dries, it can actually glue your lid on. Um, when I mix up too much of anything, like this one, I just put all my leftovers on here and you can see there's all different textures on here because I was using all the leftover paints from when I did this sample. Leftover gels. And when I mix the colour in, a couple of sprays, doesn't really matter how much you put in there, mix it thoroughly through. And you can mix any colours into it that you have. Acrylic, anything that's water based, acrylic paste, the sprays, even these marker sprays will go in. Um, you could use watercolours. I don't know what effect you would have with watercolours um, if you use watercolour. It will probably be slightly lighter. But once you've mixed it up, all you have to do is use a palette knife to spread it on. Now if you want to do a grid type pattern, just put tapes down and then spread it in the squares that you make. You can use stencils. I love using stencils for this technique. Um, and I will try and hold it up here and just spread it over. Um, I'm not doing it precise in any way and I will use all of what I've got or um, use it on to put some onto a scrap piece of fa fabric. Sometimes if I have some left over I mix, I do a lot of art journaling so I'll just put it onto paper or into an art journal book so none of it is wasted. Some of the gels and mediums can be quite expensive. Um, I don't think it matters. You just have to test out what you do get. Um, cheaper ones might be a bit glossier, but on fabric, on paper they tend to be glossy. But on fabric you don't really get as much of the gloss effect. Now I'm trying to scrape all of the medium off the stencil. So that's actually making it go further. So you can actually see the stencil again. That means that you're not going to be much left stuck to the stencil. So I would take that off and then just let that dry. And when it's dry, when it's dry you'll get something like this. And for all of these I've used this same colour mixed into it. So you can see how because the pumice gel is, or this one must be the sand texture gel, is slightly yellow, it's made a slightly different colour to the rest of the samples. This one I've done one layer of texture gel, put down a stencil and done a second layer on top. So you get this sort of not perfect stencil appearance like this one. But it's an interesting textured surface. Here we've got more of the, um, this is just a matte gel with a stencil with the colour, the colour had been added to the matte gel. Here's the flakes in a gel. They're really shiny, I don't know if you can see that. But really shiny in this gel. So I'd probably, I have written down what all these gels were. That one was just this, it's an Australian brand of gel. Um, but it's very clear and shiny, very transparent. I really like that one. Um, and it would be great for if you were doing a picture with fairies or something, you know, you could do wings like that. This one here, I've used, I tried to graduate the gel, so I've put a thin coat here and thicker here, and you can see that in the colour. So that, that is the same gel, but with, um, with the dye spray added to it. This one I've done the same way, thin here and thick here, but because the acrylic paint 
is a little bit opaque you get a much more even coat of colour than you do with the liquid sprays so you really need to before you do a big project try out and do a little test sample they they dry basically overnight some will dry a lot faster so it's worth taking that little bit of time to test out your your colouring methods whether you colour beforehand or colour afterwards um, this this sample here as I said I just scraped all the leftovers you can see there's a little bit of the iridescent flakes there there's that sand texture gel which was a slightly different colour lots of fibre paste because I did use quite a bit of that and you can see here this is the area with the paint mixed into the gel and this was the area with the dye mixed into the gel it's a huge difference in the amount of background fabric that's showing through and I'll just spray these um, these Lindy Stamp Gang sprays actually have dye but they have um, mica in the bottom so you really need to shake them up make sure that they're not there I also take the lids off because a little bit of the powder gets stuck in the bottom there so I just give it a little tap to make sure there's no powder in there otherwise when you start spraying you'll instantly clog your nozzle and always put these lids on to stop the acrylic medium drying in the nozzle and causing a permanent block if you follow if you always put the lid on um, you may still get the occasional blockage but it can easily be unblocked with some hot water run it take the lid off put it into hot water and pump keep pumping until eventually the water clears it and it will spray again I've done that many a time so with these texture gels um, I just spray this is how I mostly color it because I'm too lazy to get paints out and paint it um, this is pretty instant I'll just randomly spray if I'm using two colors like I will today I'll just spray a few bits here and there I usually do it somewhere where it's not going to matter if, about the excess spray now this spray is doesn't have quite the same problem because the nozzle stops short of the bottom um, this spray has just got gold in it so it's not going to add a lot of color until it dries when it dries then you get to see all the glittery mica that is stuck to the surface it's the same sort of um, mica that's in the mica flakes but it's just really fine it's been ground up a lot more um, and these sprays have an additive that makes them stick I'll let that dry now and I will share the dried I'll show you what it looks like dry on my blog so you can see how that has come out not sure how much I did add a lot of water to the gold so I don't know how much of the glitter is still in there where you get puddles tends to be where you get shiny spots when it's finished this one that was also done with the mica sprays the dye has made it red and green sort of where it mixes is a bit orange and stuff um, hopefully you can see if I get it in the light the correct way you'll be able to see the mica which especially in this section here I think you can see that adds another color to it it's one of the reasons why I really like these mica sprays because when you see it flat you don't see them and then as people move things around or if it was on the wall you and you walked past it would change color as you walked by this one here is quilt batting 
It's quite an interesting texture. I like the way that it took the colour as well. This sample here is actually the where I mix the metal flakes, silver metal flakes, into the gel and it tarnished. You can see all the dark is the tarnished. So I put more gel on, more silver flakes on top. One thing though, when you're doing the texture gels, if you make holes in the texture gels, um, like here, I don't know if you, you should be able to see that, I hope. Um, if you make a hole, it's permanent. So if you're going to add beads and things, make sure you know where you're going to stick them before you go poking holes through your work. And the iridescent flakes came out really well with this one with once you spray it with the marker spray it's a very interesting color other you don't have to only do the mediums onto fabric here I've done it onto Tyvek which has been colored so it's like a plasticky material and this is the sand texture gel um, with a stencil. It's just been stenciled onto there and I've coloured it. This was some time ago. I think I just sprayed it. This one is a sample I've done on Luchador, which is this metallic. This one's a metallic one, a metallic Luchador. It's like fibres that you can heat to distort and here I've just used some um, texture paste and it's picked up the color it was actually white and it's picked up the color from the Luchador which was blue and it's changed the color of the gel and I've distressed half of the Luchador with the heat gun and where the medium is it hasn't effect hasn't melted but the bits in the gaps in between the medium, the Luchador has melted away for an interesting texture. Another thing you can use is dressmaking paper. Dressmaking patterns are made on a fairly strong tissue paper, especially the older varieties. The newer ones these days are not so great, but if you've got some old dressmaking patterns, cut them up. This one's been coloured just randomly with paints and sometimes I colour them with sprays. Um, so this piece started out with this same dressmaking paper that had been coloured like this. I put the texture gel on and the texture gel let it dry and it acts as a resist. So then I've sprayed it with the red spray the green is still visible through the, the texture gel. So that's another thing that you can do. You can use the gels to preserve one colour and then go over it with a different colour. This is the same idea with the using a stencil to apply a texture gel onto what basically was a tea bag paper. Um, this one was uncolored and then I've put the gel on and then when I sprayed it gel took the spray slightly differently to the tea bag so you get to a two-tone effect this is why I say you need to test out your ideas so make samples experiment play with what you've had it doesn't matter what brands you use you can experiment with different things added into your gels. If you're not sure, do a sample um, just to make sure that the colour goes the way you want. There are lots of different art mediums, texture paste, texture gels, all sorts of things you can use on fabric. Originally they're designed to go on canvas and what's canvas? Fabric. So use what you have, experiment, add things to it, add colour to it, um, it's really 
a very exciting medium to use and it adds an extra dimension to your work. When you do it with a palette knife you can smooth it over, you can make it lumpy if you want to. The possibilities for this technique are endless. There's no specific fabric that you need to use, it doesn't have to be synthetic, natural, doesn't really matter. This is actually tea bags, used tea bags as the background. The paste sticks very well to it because it sticks to paper well. If you're going to use stencils, this was done with a stencil, make sure you wash your stencil as soon as you've finished working with it because the gels do dry quite hard on surfaces like stencil plastic and may not come off so make sure you wash your things out straight away same if you apply it with a paintbrush um, the paintbrush will leave marks in the gel which could be quite an interesting texture on its own but again wash your paintbrush as soon as you've finished working with it and if you're going to paint a lot, wash your paintbrush a couple of times while you're using it. There's not much more I can tell you. Just go and have fun with this 